hi fellows hope you are doing well so today in this lecture i'm going to present a little introduction about thalassemia and how it's a genetic disorder so moving to the objectives of this lecture we'll be covering uh, thalassemia its introduction and how it is classified as a genetic disorder and its various types depending upon whether the defect is in alpha chain or the beta globin chain and how it is reflected in its clinical spectrum so as you know thalassemia is actually the defect in the globin chain of the hemoglobin which is present in the red blood cells and is characterized usually by the decreased production of the hemoglobin. Uh, it was historically actually affecting the population living near the Mediterranean coast or near the sea and hence it was classified or uh, named as thalassemia means the enemy of the sea. It usually affects uh, men and women equally. Uh, and the incidence rates are approximately 4.4 for every 10,000 live births uh, currently. And it doesn't have any discrepancy in between any ethnic groups or geographic locations, except that those areas which are living uh, near the sea are usually affected more. And it has also been found that in the subtropical regions of the Asia and Africa, or in the Mediterranean base, they are mostly um, uh, more prone to the thalassemia um, disease. Also, those areas which are endemic to the malaria or in which the malaria is affecting more or historically affected more by the thalassemia. So they go in hand in hand with each other. So wherever you will find the malaria, there is a high chances of that region to be a thalassemic region as well. As you can see in the map here, you will see that the Mediterranean belt extends from the Europe to the Asia till Australia. And this, these are the regions which are most commonly found to be affected with the thalassemia more. And in Africa as well, you will see that thalassemia is present and more common. So these are the areas which are most co common and mostly um, uh, located uh, in the sea coasts or near the sea coast. So before we move further down to the topic of discussing the thalassemia and how it is a genetic uh, disorder, we should know something about the hemoglobin. As you already might know that hemoglobin is a central molecule in RBCs which carry uh, oxygen from the lungs to the tissues. Uh, within the RBCs, this hemoglobin is actually a, a roughly spherical molecule of uh, molecular weight 64 kilodaltons with a diameter of around 5.5 uh, nanometers. And it is a tetrameric protein. Uh, that means that uh, it contains uh, four different subunits. It's a hetero tetramer, which means it contains two different uh, types of uh, subunits in its structure. And each uh, subunit is bound to the uh, heme prosthetic group. So this uh, polypeptide which is present uh, within this um, uh, hemoglobin are actually of two different uh, types of globins. One is alpha and second is beta. Alpha chain, each alpha chain is made up of 141 amino acid residues and beta chain is uh, composed of 146 amino acid residues. There's a difference between the amino acid and an amino acid residue. Amino acid residue differs from the amino acid uh, by a single molecule of uh, water. Further, uh, since uh, there, uh, the alpha or the beta chain is bound to the, each of the heme prosthetic group, uh, here the functionality is done by E and F uh, helices of the each alpha or each beta chain, which binds to, to the uh, heme prosthetic group. And internal heme prosthetic group is a functional uh, group here, which binds to the oxygen for its functionality. So, if we talk about the mutations, if there is a mutation in the structural uh, of these alpha chains or in the gene uh, which codes for the alpha or beta gene, then this will be reflected in the structure and the functionality of the hemoglobin as well. 
and there are two different types of the mutations which can happen one is the point mutation which you might see in the sickle cell anemia which is beyond the topic uh, here because i'm focusing uh, we are focusing particularly to the thalassemia and second is the gross mutations which happen in case of thalassemia so what happens in thalassemia is that they are the quantitative disorders uh, in contrast to other structural hemoglobinopathies like in the sickle cell anemia what are quantitative disorders that means that the amount of globin whether that is alpha or beta uh, is affected the amount of globin synthesized usually equivalent amounts should be synthesized so that the proper uh, hemoglobin is attained proper structure of the hemoglobin with four chains two of alpha two or beta is attained if there is a disparity in synthesized synthesis of the alpha or the beta globin then uh, the it results in the quantitative disorders which can be reflected in the thalassemia so individual with these syndromes are characterized according to the affected globin chain if there is a uh, disparity of the synthesis in the alpha then it will be called as alpha thalassemia and if it is um, affecting the beta um, globin synthesis then it will be called as beta thalassemia so alpha thalassemias affect alpha globin and uh, either they are reduced or absent and beta thalassemia will be affecting beta globin genes as i already said so there is also a, uh, a geographical uh, disparity between the alpha and the beta usually far east uh, thalassemias uh, are usually alpha thalassemias and the thalassemias which affect the mediterranean region are mostly beta thalassemias there are other types also which i, I might cover down the lecture and uh, further sub classification can also be done depending upon whether the alpha or beta chain is partially absent or totally absent if it is totally absent then we usually refer to re represent it as uh, alpha not or beta not and if it is partially absent and then uh, we will uh, represent it as alpha plus and beta plus that means that beta chain is partially absent or alpha chain is partially absent how thalassemia is a genetic disorder is uh, reflected in the mutations either in the chromosome 11 or chromosome 16 of an individual which carries them so thalassemia is uh, a defect uh, in the uh, genes either in the uh, chromosome 11 or chromosome 16 which actually are responsible for the coding of the protein uh, globin either of alpha or of beta chain uh, for alpha chain the genes are present in the chromosome 16 and for the beta chains the uh, gene is present in the chromosome 11 and you know already and each individual uh, receives uh, two copies of each chromosome so in totality uh, for the synthesis of the alpha globin we have four genes uh, two in each chromosome 16 and for the synthesis of a beta uh, globin we have two copies one each each chromosome from the either mother or father besides these we have all other uh, globins as well which are synthesized from the chromosome 11 or chromosome 16 during the fetal life as well so in thalassemia what happens is uh, there is a def defect or deficiency in the synthesis of uh, either alpha or beta uh, chains which is reflected in the uh, loss of the proteins and hence the globin is not able to um, manufacture or produce the hemoglobin necessary for the synthesis or uh, necessary for the uptake of the oxygen. and these are usually caused by the deletions or the mutations in these particular genes moving to the uh, types of the thalassemias here we will discuss about the alpha thalassemias and the type there are four different types depending upon the severity of the mutation in the alpha gene uh, which can be classified as uh, the silent one where there is a single deletion so out of four uh, genes which code for the alpha globin one gene is deleted and the rest three are 
working fine so this is usually asymptomatic and normally uh, there will be a normal hematological findings in this type of an thalassemia carrier then there is a trait or minor thalassemia in which two out of four copies of the genes are deleted which can lead to microcytosis and usually there is uh, rarely any anemia then the third one is called as intermedia or hbh uh, disease as well uh, here the three genes three genes coding for the B, uh, alpha um, uh, globin is deleted so only one chain is uh, or one gene of the uh, beta uh, is uh, functional and this uh, results in the uh, microcytic anemia as a uh, phenotype and usually leads to hemolysis as well as sickle and megaly in clinical findings and the fourth one is the important one is called as the bart's um, uh, phenotype also or hb bart in which all four genes uh, coding for the alpha globin are deleted or phone alpha or all four uh, alpha globin genes are deleted so what happens here uh, since all four are deleted there is no alpha chain uh, to generate a mature hemoglobin here the hemoglobin um, usually is containing four gamma chains because gamma chains is the one which takes uh, the role of alpha in its absence and hence this uh, hemoglobin is also called as hb bart and usually it is uh, incompatible with life and uh, can be existing only in the fetal stage but uh, as soon as they are uh, born uh, they are not viable they lead, it leads to the death in utero or hydrops fetalis also called as a hydrops uh, fetalis and this is a comparison between the different types of thalassemias you can see the mutations in the chromosome 16 maybe one two three or all four when it is all four it leads to the uh, high drops fetalysis while the hemoglobin which is present in the uh, rbcs in this condition are usually containing the fetal chain fetal globin chain Beta thalassemia is classified into three different types as well, uh, depending upon the mutations or the deletions of a beta globin gene. Uh, so it is classified as a trait, the minor one, uh, which is uh, as a result of a one gene defect or one gene mutation, and the other copy is uh, um, being expressed, and hence it is usually asymptomatic and results in a mild microcytosis or mild anemia then depending upon whether the uh, genes which code for the beta globin are moderately reduced then it will lead to an intermediate type and finally the major one which is also called as coolies anemia when there is a severe reduction or complete absence of the beta globin chain usually uh, they are asymptomatic at birth but uh, they develop their symptoms usually after six months of age so this is the importance of it this table shows you the uh, difference or the comparisons between the three different types of the beta thalassemias uh, depending upon the gene defect whether there is a one gene defect two gene defects or the two gene defect is a severe or a moderate so depending upon that the phenotype will be reflected upon the severity of the absence of the beta globin chain in this diagram you will see the clinical manifestations as well as the relationship between the genetic defects in the thalassemia different types of thalassemias on the left hand side uh, here you will see the alpha uh, globin locus in the chromosome 16 and its various copies if all four copies are present then it will be a normal one if there is a mutation in one or deletion on one gene copy they are working fine and it would be called as silent as i have already told you and moving from uh, from the silent uh, one gene defect to two gene defect then three gene defect then complete hb bart on the right hand side as well you will see the beta globin gene locus in the gene and the defect if the defect is in one or in both copies then how the uh, phenotype will be reflected here 
so different normal versus the different traits of the uh, thalassemia syndromes are uh, quite clear in this slide for you to understand i hope this is clear by now so uh, explaining the clinical spectrum of the thalassemia taking uh, beta thalassemia as one of the uh, examples here you will see in beta thalassemia as already known that there will be either the uh, partial loss of the beta globulin chain or complete absence which will manifest uh, into one of the effects is that there will be a excess free alpha chains which in turn will cause either the membrane damage to the rbcs leading to hemolysis or it will cause a precipitation of rbc precursors which will cause premature death of rbc precursors leading to ineffic ineffective atopoiesis and fin finally manifest as anemia anemia then can have a three different varied effects uh, which can lead to skeletal change as well as leading to cirrhosis or endocrine dysfunctions or heart failure as well this is the overall clinical spectrum of the beta thalassemia as one of the examples and uh, whether the thalassemia requires uh, the transfusion or not this diagram explains that uh, depending upon which type of an thalassemia is it and whether it requires the transfusion or not it can be classified as ntdt or tdt ntdt is called as non -tra non transfusion dependent thalassemia uh, where the uh, patient who is affected uh, by the gene defect does not usually require transfusions but uh, there is a second type also called uh, called as tdt transfusion dependent thalassemias uh, require frequent um, uh, transfusions in them the rest is uh, shown in the um, diagram in itself which you can see usually you will see alpha traits or beta thalassemia traits usually don't have a need uh, they don't have a dependency or they don't need um, what you call as transfusions whereas uh, as you move from the minor to the um, through the intermediate to the major usually intermediate types of thalassemia require sometimes um, the transfusions while as the thalassemia major types whether that is alpha or a beta require always transfusions so this is pretty much it about the thalassemia you can consult the hematology book which is referenced here for further uh, studies if you have any other questions you can contact me on the given address and please do give your feedback and subscribe to the channel if you like this uh, i will be uploading more of the lectures uh, quick lectures short lectures for your future use so take care of yourself this is it